Hi there, this is Robin Andrews from Compu Academy, where we teach you about programming and computer science in a fun and accessible way. So, we're going to look today at snake case and camel case and to write a function to convert between the two. So, before we do that, let's talk about what they are. All right, so snake case is all lowercase. Okay, now this is good Python. Okay, I'm going to say good Python, I mean following the kind of guidelines. Like, there's a thing called PEP8, which is a document about good Python stylistic python okay um and they recommend using snake case for variable names and function names okay very often you will see something like this instead you'll see snake case now generally um this is something you do in javascript quite a lot and probably in other languages um something like visual basic you probably have capitals on all of them okay so that would be this is called camel case maybe i shouldn't write snake case i write camel case and the uh, the naming isn't completely consistent. So sometimes camel case, people assume there's a, a capital at the beginning as well. Sometimes that's called title case. So it's not completely clear. But the, the basic style is that you jam your words together with no space in between and you capitalize each individual word, the first letter of each individual word. And like I say, this is more of a JavaScript or other language thing. It's not very Pythonic. So in Python, we tend to use snake case. Okay, so let's say we find a lovely program um, that we want to use, but it annoys us because we're maybe fussy about this kind of thing, um, that it's using this unpythonic camel case, and we want to do something about that. So we write a function. So def, and we're going to call it uncamel. Okay. And it's going to take a string. I'm going to call it my sutura. Now, in terms of choosing function arguments, just be aware that if, you, if I'd used str, sorry, s, TR. Can you see that I've got this highlighting? Okay, so it's gone purple, which means that's a reserved Python keyword, so I shouldn't use it. Okay, so it's better to use something like my string or some other variable name that you like, but that doesn't clash with a reserved keyword. Okay, okay and I'm going to be really lazy. I'm just going to do pass. Okay, I'm not doing anything. Now, the reason I've done that is because I like to write tests before I actually write my function. Now, what I mean by that is different ways you can do this. If you do print and then un camel and then you pass in whatever string you want to uncamel so let's say let's do snake case written with the wrong case right so if i want to uncamel that then i can make a little uh, what have i done too many brackets now i can make a little comment to myself that that should be should be snake Okay, so I'm just going to turn on my line numbers so that I can call them out. And I realize I haven't closed that bracket. So now when I save this and run it, you'll see that the actual return value, okay, is none. Now it's, it's worth understanding this. So if you call a function and it doesn't return anything, but you print the result of calling that function, you're going to see none because by default, none is returned. Okay. But we're in quite good shape because we know what we're looking for. Okay, so the idea of writing this first is we know what our function should do in a specific instance, and that really helps to focus our mind. Okay, now another way of doing this, which is actually I prefer, I won't say it's better, but I prefer, um, you can do assert. Okay, it sounds like a scary word, but it's a really simple concept. Assert that this function call. Okay, so assert that calling that will return so is equal to snake case okay so this is again test driven development we're thinking about what we want the result to be and we're saying we're asking ourselves is calling uncamel with this string going to give us this result and if it does then we're, we're fine if it doesn't we'll get an error okay so i'm just going to comment out the print version so feel free to use either of these ways of testing a function that you prefer. So what I've done on line nine using print, printing the return value, or simply asserting what I've done on line eight, that that return value is equal to some value, some expected value. Okay. So now we're going to get an error. Okay. Seems like a clumsy way of doing things, I know, but it's, it really makes sense once you've done a, a bit of it. Okay. We've got an assertion error, and we've got an assertion error because we made an assertion. An assertion is a claim. It's not a difficult concept. We make a claim that this the result of this function call is going to be this and it wasn't because the result was actually none and so we got an assertion error okay that's how assert works it's a great tool um 
take it or leave it, whatever your preference, but you can always do this other method using printing the output. But then let's get on to our actual function. Now, um, we're going to use something called the accumulator pattern. Okay. Now, this isn't a technical term. I only came across it recently and I was like, oh, that's exactly what I've been doing so many times. I haven't had a name for it. And the basic idea is we start with some value, um, which is our result. So we can call it output or result output. And in this case, because we want it to be a string, we're going to start with an empty string. Okay. And then we do something in a loop that modifies that output based on our input. So that sounds really abstract, but so let's, uh, let's just dive in. If you think about the logic, we want the first letter to always be lowercase, okay? So this, this particular example doesn't show that, so I'll do another assertion. Just copy my assertion and do another one. Let's say that even with capital there, we still want the same result. So whatever else happens in the string, we definitely want the first letter to be made lower, okay? Now, let me just show you the functions we're gonna use. I'm doing multi-line comments here just so I can do text typing basically. Some of the functions we might need are lower, upper, um, is lower, and is. Okay, so I'm just giving you all these in case you need them. These are ways of dealing with upper and lowercase letters in Python. Okay? And they work by putting dot in front of them all after the string that you're testing. Yeah, dot is, dot is. Okay, so we might need these. Okay. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get that first character. So what we can do is we can say output, output plus equals. Now this is the same as saying output equals output. Um, typing is so bad, I apologize. Output plus. Okay. So I'm gonna go with this method. The other one's fine if you recognize what I just did there, but this is more, more kind of in line with what the syllabus will expect if you're doing an exam. So output equals output plus the first character. Now, how do we get the first character? Well, my str, and it's going to be using string indices, which are the same as list indices. The first character is the one at index zero, okay? So now, if I return my output, uh, we're not going to see it in this case. So let's go back to this version, format, uh, comment out region and then I want to uncomment this one just because it's going to be easier to show what I mean in this case so now if I run it okay so <laughs> now my function returns s okay and it does that because it's taken the first character of my input which was maestro and it's created an empty string and then it's appended to that empty string um, Append normally relates to lists, but the concept is the same. I could say concatenated to that empty string, um, or maybe concatenated with. Okay, but the, the, the verb is to concatenate, which is when you're joining strings together. Um, whatever the name of what I've done, it's, I think you can see what I've done. I've just added the first string, right? The, sorry, the first character to my result string. And then I've just returned that, which is not what I want. I need to loop through the, the rest of my string. So when I say loop through the rest of my string, Loop for the rest of my string. So we're using iteration, okay? So we've got those three core concepts that I keep talking about. You've got selection, iteration, and uh, sequence. We're using iteration because we need to do something multiple times. Um, so how are we gonna do that? Well, I've talked in a previous video about which iteration construct to use. You've basically got four to choose from. Um, if you're doing pseudocode, the fourth one is relevant. If you're just doing Python, it's just the first three. So you've either got four i in range or you've got four i in or you've got while, okay? Now we're gonna use for i in, and i is just an example. You might use a different word. It's gonna be much more clear when I actually start typing. For char, okay? So instead of using for i in range, okay, and then, you know, some, the length of my string, it's much more Pythonic and much simpler just to say for char or some variable name that's meaningful in the context okay so in this context we're talking about characters of a string so we say for character in my my string right so however we don't want to just do um the whole string because we only want everything but the the first string 
Okay, so actually, before I even do this, I'm just going to show you how that works. Uh, just put a comment in front of that. If I want to print my my strut, and if I want to do a slice of my string, okay, so I can do something like one to four, okay, then you'll see. Okay, so here this is not a return value. Okay, this is actually printing within the function. So just think about procedures and functions if you if you know about those. I'm not returning. I'm just printing it just to get some debugging output, right? So if I run that. Um, so th this top one was the output of doing a, what we call a string slice from one to four, but not including four. Okay, so it takes the lower bound, but it doesn't go to the upper bound. Okay, it's, it stops one short of that. However, we want from one to the end of the list. And the way we do that is we have this other shortcut. So basically I'm squeezing a lot of information into this, into this video. So you, know, you might have to go and unpack some of it. This is called list slicing. And the way you can go just to the end of the list without having to specify where that is, because it might be a you know, variable length list or string, I should be saying, um, is you just have the colon with nothing, yeah? nothing after it. So what I'm saying is for, we're doing our iteration for character in my string, but not the whole string, the string from one to the end. Yeah. So for each character in my string from one to the end, do something. Okay. And what I'm going to do is this, I'm going to do, um, da, 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 da. yeah. Yeah. Well, it's uh, if this character, and I could be just, just to throw this out there, I could be making comments as I go along. Now, I really encourage you to do this, um, especially while you're learning, and even for quite a long time, you know, when, you're, when you've got quite a lot of experience, write comments as you go along about what you're about to do. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to say, check if the character, I'll be, I'll be a bit sloppy, just send it the char instead of character, is uppercase. Okay, uppercase. Um, so that means if char dot is upper, okay, that's how you use that function. If it is, then what do you want to do? Well, you think about the, the result we want. Um, we want snake case with no spaces to be snake case with uh, an underscore and then a lowercase. So first of all, we do output plus equals, which is the same as output equals output plus, right? And then we bung in this underscore, okay? But we also, this is the case where we found a capital letter. We also want to add oh, output equal, equals output plus char dot lower, okay? We want the lowercase version of the capital that we just found that told us we wanted an underscore and a lowercase. So that's fine. Now, if I run that, let's see what happens. Always run your code every few lines. See, we've got S underscore C, which is looking okay. So it's not complete, obviously. Okay, S underscore C. So what's going on there? Well, basically, we've only dealt with the cases where, we, where our character was uppercase. Okay, so we then need another. Okay, so this is going to be otherwise. And that else is like otherwise. Otherwise, just... Um, it's not really replacing, just um, add in the character or just add the character to output string. Okay, so the output's going to be a string. <laughs> so I think it's embarrassing. Okay, so, so this is the else part, right? So else we do output Output, output equals output, output plus, plus what? Think about it. Okay, what's it going to be? If you're, if you're awake, you know what to put here. If you've kind of drifted away, then you might not be so sure. Okay. Basically, what we're going to put here is the character. Remember, we're iterate, we're looping through the rest of my string, and we're naming as we go along. Each character is being assigned to the variable name character char. Sorry. Um, so that's the one we're dealing with. So it's going to be plus char. So let's see now. Okay, so it actually works. Snake case, right? Now let's do that with the assertions. So I'm going to get rid of the print version. 
and I'm going to bring back my assertions. So uncomment region. Okay. And then save. I'll do control S to save. And then run again, F5. Ah, and I did get an assertion error. <laughs> okay, so actually this is something that I missed earlier, is I don't just want the first character to be the first character, I want it to be certain to be the lowercase version of that, okay? So this is why these assertions are so great and knowing what you're looking for. Otherwise that could easily have passed by and I'd be like, yeah, I've done it, move on to the next thing. But no, there's an error, okay? So let's try again. Okay, now it looks like nothing's happened, okay? So the thing about assertions is, if nothing happens, your code is correct, okay? So I did these assertions. The claims that I made would happen, did happen, okay? So everything's fine. And of course, you might want to write several more. I don't think there's a duplicate line shortcut in idle. There is in a lot of editors, so I just have to copy and paste. So I can try another one. I can try, I don't know, um, Python is, Fun. What should that come out as? Okay, well, it should come out as Python is fun. So let's run that. And again, nothing happened, so I was correct. Okay, so it's a different way of doing things. Like I say, you can use the other, if you prefer the other version, it's absolutely fine, where you actually print the result and then kind of manually or visually check um, that the output is what you think it should be. That's basically it. Now, the I said at the beginning, the purpose of this was really to describe the accumulator pattern so I better just talk about that for a moment so it's used so many times so yeah the accumulator pattern we start off with something empty okay and then we build it so in this case we build the first character make sure it's correct and then within a loop we do the rest of the building and then we return that thing that we initialized to be empty now you see this again and again, it doesn't just have to be a string, you see it with lists a lot, and you see it with numbers as well. You might start with a count of zero, and then during some loop, you might increase that count and then return the count. So I might actually just very quickly show you another example. Um, so we do def counter, and it takes, let's say it takes a string. Um, so we do result, and you'll see this so often in code wars and places like that, equals zero and then for um, char again, let's use char in in string, okay. Uh, result plus equals, it's the same as result equals result plus one, right? And then we can return, return results. So this is very generic. You can use result, you can use output if it's gonna be output. Um, so then when we call this, we do um, print, counter and then we pass in on a cat and we should get three right so let's see if we do yeah, okay so three okay so our function works same pattern okay why is this the accumulator pattern we start off with something empty or well, it might not be completely empty but we start off with something that we're going to modify and build on as we go through some kind of iteration so we start off with zero as being our counter and then for each character in our string we increase our counter and then we return our counter which is called result and then we called a function with some test data and we find that the length of cat is three, three characters. Okay, so that's the accumulator pattern. It comes up again and again and again, especially in the type, type of problems that you're gonna be doing for GCSE and A-level. It's an incredibly common, useful pattern. And like I said, until recently, I didn't even know there was a name for it. And then it's like, I saw it and I was like, yes, that is exactly um, what we're doing here. We're accumulating. There it is, folks. That's the accumulator pattern in Python. Hope that was useful. If you like the video, please click like and subscribe to me. And like I said, I've got a website on compucademy.co.uk with loads of articles about computer science, GCSE, A-level, and also just general Python programming. I've also got a newsletter there you can sign up for. And that's it for now, folks. Take care, see you in the next video.